I wanted to take a few minutes and show how to simplify adding players um, to the combat tracker inside of Roll20. We run into an issue in our game a lot where the GM says roll initiative and this player Diego says, okay, I'll roll initiative. And a turn goes by and all of a sudden the player goes, well, I never went. My initiative was 22. I should have gone first. Or they didn't even realize what their initiative role was. They just clicked the button and didn't really re realize what it meant. Um, well, the reason is, is to get added to the combat tracker, all these buttons require you to have your token selected when you choose initiative. And now you can see that it was added. In fact, you could select somebody else's button and, and give them your initiative score when you do this. So that's a bit of a problem, like understanding what do I select, what don't I select, things like that. So I want to show a really easy way to make this uh, to make this really simple not to screw this up. Uh, what we're going to do is on each of the characters, and the GM can do this, we're going to add a new macro with the option show as token action enabled. This macro is really simple. I'll add it to the comments below this video, and it's universal. So what's really great about this is, is it doesn't matter if your character, for example, has um, some different options. So for example, maybe our rogue has initiative style. Maybe he has advantage on his roles. And Ulrich, our barbarian, does not. Well, we can actually use the same macro on this, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this macro. And basically what it's going to do, it's the macro that the character sheet actually uses. Uh, it uses this field called initiative style. So if the character has initiative, this initiative style will get replaced with the correct role for this. It'll add the initiative bonus. I'm not sure what the PDB safe actually means. Uh, and then it'll uh, put in brackets that it's the initiative bonus. And then this is the important thing. It's got the ampersand signed and tracker inside of curly braces. That's actually the key that adds that to the combat tracker for us. That and adding it as a token action. So let's take a look at how this works now. The GM says roll for initiative. The player selects their token and there's a button right up here where they do this. And even with advantage, and you can see the roll here, we rolled a 2d20 keep the highest one, and it looks like I rolled a two and a one. No, one was my best roll here, plus three. <laughs> wow, no, 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 I had my two and my one. So it's still red because I had a failure in there, but I actually rolled the two. Where Ulrich will do this and he'll roll for initiative, and his is just a 1d20 plus his initiative bonus in this case. And they get added to the, care, uh, the combat tracker, and the GM can then just set that to descending and you're ready to go in combat. It's nice and easy. This way players, they don't even have to open their character sheet. They can have their character sheets minimized up off to the side. And then maybe they're playing with their attacks down here in their, um, down in their macro bar. It just makes things a little bit easier. So now we say roll for initiative. You click them, you hit this button. Um, there's a, a great thread on the forum, how to replace these with emojis to save more space. You can actually save a bunch of space up here as well doing that. So I, I highly suggest looking on the forums. There's lots of great tips there. But at the end of the day, this is a really easy way to make sure that token selection when rolling for initiative is fairly straightforward. And I'll use the word idiot proof in this case. Uh, just tell them to select their tokens and press initiative in the upper left-hand corner, and they should be good.